an introduction to note-taking in consecutive interpreting. I know that many of you have been so looking forward to learning about note-taking in consecutive interpreting. If you are like most people, you probably think that note-taking is black magic that allows interpreters to memorize large chunks of information, often 10 minutes at a time. It's true that note-taking is one of the interpreting profession's best-kept secrets. In fact, none of my teachers were willing to share their notes with me or my classmates when we were going through our training as interpreters about a decade ago. Even though we really struggled with it, their argument was that notes were highly individualized, so it was pointless to copy someone else's styles. But today, I want you to dispel the myth about note-taking. It's not black magic, and it shouldn't be kept a secret. I want to share with you some of the ideas I've developed over the course of hundreds of consecutive interpreting assignments, but also more recently from the latest findings of empirical research. If you are watching this, you probably know what it takes to be a successful consecutive interpreter. Things like understanding and analyzing the text, re-expressing the speaker's ideas in a different language. Great, you've mastered the essential skills of being a successful consecutive interpreter. Now, it's time for icing on the cake, note-taking. A few years ago, Anders K. Erickson and his colleagues from the Florida State University conducted several important experiments about learning. They found that one of the best ways to help students master something is to provide an expert model. Experts can teach us a lot, especially if we look at both their successes and failures. Just as an example, I once saw Professor Wang Ruoqin, China's former chief interpreter to the United Nations, give this awesome demo in simultaneous interpreting. It was literally a life-changing event for me. At that moment, I realized that becoming a conference interpreter was my true calling. It was something that would keep me professionally stimulated my whole life. So today, as well as sharing with you some of the basic principles of note-taking, I'm also going to give you lots of demos. In addition, I also wanted to give you lots of time to practice. But to start off, we are going to keep it easy. We are going to first learn how to take and read notes in English. So, let's take a look at some of the basic principles of note-taking. Now, let's examine the first principle of note-taking, which is writing diagonally. I know that we are using stenographers' notebooks, but that's about the limit to the similarities between what we do and what stenographers do. We are not transcribing speeches verbatim into writing. I, for one, could never make it as a court reporter because my Chinese handwriting is way too slow. If I can make a living as a conference interpreter, there is hope for anyone who is worried about not being able to keep up with a speaker. Actually, with note-taking, less is more. There are several distinct advantages of writing diagonally. First, it's easier to read back. You cannot write as much as when you go from line to line. This forces you to focus on the main ideas in your writing, as opposed to trying to transcribe each and every word said by the speaker on the notebook. Second, it also demonstrates a visible structure. You are able to figure out immediately the whole structure of the speech on a pad just by looking at it. If you are writing horizontally, you cannot see the forest through the trees. Lastly, diagonal writing is helpful because the beginning of each idea is always at the furthest spot to the left of the page. So, when you start a new sentence, you know exactly where to look for in your pad. Although one exception to the diagonal layout rule is when a speaker lists a bunch of items. In that case, the listed elements should line up vertically in a pad. This is because all the listed items have the same value, 
For example, if we take a look at the sentence that is on the slide with the whiteboard here, I love ice cream, bananas, apples, and oranges. So we write I here, love in the middle, but ice cream, bananas, apples, and oranges are considered the listed items. So all of them have the same value. So what we need to do in this case is make sure that these items line up vertically. Now, let's take a look at the second principle of note-taking, which is writing down the main ideas and linking words. If you have watched my earlier lectures, you probably have a good idea of the right way to analyze a speech. So, this principle wouldn't be too difficult for you to understand. Since Chinese and English have similar grammatical structures, subject, verb, and object, so, when you do note-taking, the first thing you need to do is to write down the subject, verb, and object of each sentence. The reason I'm asking you to do this is because it gets you into the good habit of focusing on the main ideas as opposed to getting bogged down by the trivial details. Of course, there are exceptions to every rule. For example, if the speaker is going really fast, or if you are like me, who writes painfully slow, then you just need to write down the subject or verb of each sentence. Our notes should only serve as triggers to remind us of what the speaker just said, as opposed to a blow-by-blow -blow account of each and every word said by the speaker. Okay, so now you may have also noticed that between each idea, I also have the horizontal lines in place. This helps me to separate one complete thought from the next. It is just a personal preference. Some interpreters do it, some don't. So, why don't you just play around with it and see what works best for you? Writing down only the main ideas is not enough. You also have to be able to remember the linking words between sentences. Let me give you some examples of linking words. Things like consequently, because, although, even though, so. These linking words are so important because they serve as signposts for the speaker to indicate the relationship between sentences. Let's take a look at an example. The U.S. economy is struggling. The Federal Reserve has left interest rates unchanged. These are completely parallel ideas. We don't know the relationship between them. But what if we add a but to the sentences? So now the example reads, The U.S. economy is struggling, but the Federal Reserve has left interest rates unchanged. Now the speaker is trying to communicate, despite the struggling economy, the Fed is sitting on its hands. What if we use a different linking word? Do you think that the meaning is going to change? What if, say, we use consequently? Now the sentences read as the following. The U.S. economy is struggling. Consequently, the Federal Reserve has left interest rates unchanged. Now this time, the speaker is trying to communicate because the U.S. economy is in such a bad shape the Fed has decided not to raise interest rates again. Alright, this is pretty much it to the theory of note-taking in consecutive interpreting. Before finishing, I just wanted to share with you one last item, that is symbols and abbreviations. We as interpreters use symbols and abbreviations because they save us so much time. Condensing a few words into a symbol prevents us from falling into the trap of word-for-word -word translation. Since we don't have much time now, I'm just going to put up in this slide a few common symbols used by interpreters. You can go over them at the end of this video lecture, and of course next time we're going to talk more about them in depth.
Before finishing up, I just want you to put into practice what we have learned today in this video lecture. So I have invited my good friend James to participate to help us with this exercise. So, before this video lecture, I asked James to prepare a speech. So James, would you be able to tell us what's the topic of your presentation? Sure, I will be talking about online dating from an article in The Economist. Alright, so I'm going to be taking notes on the whiteboard while James is doing his presentation. And everyone who is watching this lecture should also be doing the same. So, are you ready, James? Uh, yeah, so, dating is a treacherous business. There may be plenty of fish in the sea, yet many are unhygienic, self-absorbed, disconcertingly attracted to ex-fish or fans of Donald Trump. Digital dating sites, including a growing array of matchmaking apps, are meant to help. Their design owes more to hard-nosed economics than it does to the mysteries of the heart. Alright, James, I'm going to stop you right there. So what he just did is a verbatim rendition of the written text. But in actual interpreter training, what we are looking for are oralized presentations. What I mean by oralization is that you have to use your own ideas to communicate the message by the speaker. So now I'm going to give you a demonstration of oralization. So we are going to be using the same paragraph. I'm going to be oralizing the speech, and James is going to take notes on the whiteboard. So James, are you ready? I think so. I hope that all of you are ready, so let's give it a shot. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So today, I want you to speak with you about online dating, a topic which I'm sure you'll find fascinating and easy to relate to. Dating can be somewhat of a dangerous affair. We all heard the expression that there are plenty of fish in the ocean. But some of them, some of the fish, may not be the cleanest. Or maybe they are selfish. Or maybe they are still attracted to ex-fish. Or maybe they are even fans of Donald Trump. Digital dating websites, including a number of matchmaking apps, are supposed to help us out. Their designs, though, are strangely more focused on the economics and numbers, rather than the feelings and emotions in our hearts. Excellent. So, James, would you be able to read back your notes? Uh, yeah, so, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I wanted to talk to you about online dating, which is a very interesting and easy topic to relate to. However, this topic has some problems, and that's that uh, we know the expression, there are plenty of fish in the sea, but sometimes these fish are not clean, selfish, have problems getting over their ex, or fans of Donald Trump. Digital dating websites, including um, uh, matchmaking apps are supposed to help us, but the designs are more focused on making money and less about love and matters of the heart. As you can see, James has mastered the essentials of note-taking in executive interpreting. Let's take a look at his notes. For example, he is able to write diagonally, and also he is able to write down the main ideas. What I would encourage him and you to do a little bit more is to write down more linking words. Of course, he's able to remember everything from his memory, but when you are dealing with larger chunks of information, more often than not, if you don't write down those linking words, those signposts, you are going to forget them. For instance, here, the speaker was saying, there are plenty of fish in the ocean, but... If I were James, I would write but here to the furthest spot of my notebook and saying that but some of the fish are not clean, some of them may be selfish or has other types of liabilities. Now I'm going to give you a demo of note taking 
I'm going to ask James to oralize the next paragraph in the speech that he prepared. And everyone else, please take notes with me together. Okay. Ready? Yes. All right. If you look at it a certain way, finding someone to love isn't so different from seeking gainful employment. Jobs are similar to dating in the sense that a prospective partner in love can have their strengths or their weaknesses, which makes finding the right match a matter of complex negotiation. These pairings are different. From other transactions, because both sides have to agree to the pairing in order for the match to happen. By contrast, a supermarket, for example, doesn't care who's paying as long as they're paying. A power company doesn't worry about whether a customer deserves its energy. Now I'm going to read back my notes. From a certain perspective, finding a romantic partner is just like finding a new job. They are very similar because there are good employers and bad employers, and that actually makes matchmaking a very complex endeavor. The reason is because matchmaking or finding an employment opportunity is very different from just a random transaction. We have to make sure there is going to be mutual interest. By contrast. Supermarkets and power companies don't really care about their consumers as long as they are able to pay. So, as you can see, with note taking, less is more. With a little bit more practice, you are going to get better. Note taking is a conscious act of extracting maximum meaning from a script in the minimum number of words. With a little more practice, I'm sure that all of you are going to be taking notes like pros. So this brings me to the end of my lecture today. To recap, we have learned some of the basic principles of note taking, such as writing diagonally and writing down main ideas and linking words. For our next lecture, we are going to focus on abbreviations and symbols. Between now and our next lecture, I hope that all of you are going to practice a couple of hours each day. So until next time, see you.